by me. I'm gonna start with moisturizer. I always use moisturizer. This one is awesome if you have oily skin. So it's for combination oily. So they have normal, they have normal to dry, and then I like this one because I tend to get a little bit oily. So hence the breakouts. And then I just use, you know, about that much. Rub it on my hands. I use is foundation now I have like a lot to talk about with foundation this is my very favorite personally I have oily skin and I hesitate to ever recommend this to people who have dry skin because I think you'll hate me for it so I'm gonna give you an alternative so the other alternative is the bare minerals powder here's why it's an awesome option for you it has the most beautiful pearl finish and it's buildable so if you want to have just super light coverage if you're like a natural person use that like when Alyssa had acne and she was on Accutane it was the only thing that would stick to her skin and it's crazy because it's the powder you think with the powder it's gonna just flake off because it's dry no it was amazing so if you have really bad acne that's another good option because you can like rub the brush around and just get more powder on and more coverage so very buildable from like literally almost no coverage to very heavy coverage the other option is the shine BB cream this is another good one because it's good for like summertime or when you're out swimming and you're like oh I want to have a little bit of coverage but I don't want a ton this is another good option it's a longer wearing not as long as double wear but it's another good option. It lasts a long time, the tubes are big, and the colors, they blend really well with your skin probably because it's a light coverage. I used to always put my foundation on with my fingers, and I thought people who put it on with the brush were crazy, and then I tried it with a brush. So I'm going to link this brush set because let's talk about this. I can get the whole set of brushes for $9.99. So it comes with this, it comes with powder brush, it comes with all the ones that I'm going to show you with my eyeshadow. I'm telling you, it's awesome. I ended up buying another set because one time when I went on vacation, I brought all my makeup and forgot my brushes. So I thought, I'm just going to keep a set of brushes always in my travel case because I am not going to forget my brushes ever, ever again. So $9.99, I'll put the link below. You're going to love me. You're welcome. So, okay, this is another thing. If you have a bottle. So I shake it up and there's usually foundation. So there's usually foundation in the lid. And so that's actually where I dip my brush and then that's how I put it on. So I'll just kind of dip and put it on. And here's the truth of it. I want to take about five minutes on my makeup and when I'm not explaining all these things I can do my makeup in five minutes because I, I don't like get too fancy I just do the things that I feel like look good and are important and I'm done for the day but your face almost looks awful when you get all the foundation on you look like but think of it as a, a plain canvas to work with I will also go underneath my chin and kind of blend it on my neck because nobody wants a lot of now, if you're using the Bare Minerals foundation, you don't need to worry about this next step because you'll have already set it because it is a powder. But I like to set my foundation with a powder, just a light powder. So here's actually the Shine powder brush, and I use the Shine powder. At, in saying that, I did get a powder brush with my set, but it's in my travel case. So anyway, so I'm using this one. This is, it's a little more, it is more expensive, but it's a nice brush. It's like super dense, you'll like it. So now on to the Shine, and this is just the powder. I just dip it in, and I just kind of do like a light dusting all over my face. And for color reference, I am using Indestructible. Next step. So I know everyone in the world loves contouring. And I guess you could say I contour with my bronzers and stuff, but I don't do all the crazy, like mark my face up like a tiger, then blend it in with a blender brush. I don't have time for that. And I don't know who really does every single day. I use the Mac bronzers. And guess what? If you go to the Mac pro stores or the Mac stores, a lot of times you can build your own sets. So I have like eyeshadows that I like and bronzers that I like and blushes that I like, but I use the darker colors as for like my contouring. So start back here and then move forward. If you're gonna go like that, that's where you go. Okay. Don't bring it up too far or you'll look like um, black cheeks and we don't want that. But I do it a few times and then um, I try to kind of like move it up and down while I'm going like, I don't know, within it. So you don't get too harsh of a solid line. And then other side. And keep in mind, there's like, people say there's rules to makeup. I think there's no rules to makeup. I think that rules to makeup are what the rules you make them. Okay, so I also like to take the top of my head. Sometimes like a good thing to like think of when you're doing it too is like you do an E and a three. So those are the, the places you hit, but I don't go in that order. I'll just kind of start here and up here, you know, blend it into my hair and then I'll take it under my jawline. Here's 
the other thing too, is it looks a little bit more dramatic when you start, but it always kind of like blends in and melts together. Okay, this is one of my old brushes. <laughs> It broke, still use it, it's fine, don't worry about it. So I'll use like a little bit of blush and I put my blush like kind of up front and it's this color, it's like light pink. So one other thing that can be is I'll take my bronzer and sometimes I'll go along the side of my nose, but if you have a super skinny nose, you don't need to do that. My nose isn't quite as skinny, so I do it. Okay, so then put the blush on. Here's another thing. So a lot of times people are like putting so much white concealer or so much, and for me, by the end of the day, my white concealer or my highlighter concealer always got crinkly, wrinkly in my eyes, and I just couldn't do it. Here is another option, and they sell this at MAC. This happened to be um, like a kit that they had. It's a contour kit. You can use these kind of colors for your bronzers and these for your highlighters. I like it because it's a powder and it didn't get all over. It wasn't too crazy. If you have dark circles under your eyes listen up so you'll want to grab like a lighter color and you can just kind of highlight underneath your eyes now while I'm saying that if you have puffy eyes underneath this is the worst thing you can do by putting the white underneath on your eyes when they're already puffy it's gonna make them puffier don't do this if you have puffy eyes do do this if you have dark circles so this is the Becca cosmetics it's the champagne pop and I've had it for like a million years I don't travel with it because it's already starting to break and it doesn't have a lid you can take this just kind of I'll brush along the top of my cheeks right there and then sometimes I'll take it like right down the center of my nose you can put it like top of your lip right there next up this one I hate to tell you about because it's sold out but I still have them because if you know me I buy like food storage for my makeup I always buy my makeup then I buy one for backup so that if I run out of it I'm not in the middle of doing my makeup without my makeup so this is their paints but they do make paint pots now that are very similar so I like to use the lightest color they have and I put it on my eyelid and it helps my makeup my eyeshadow stay on and it kind of brightens my eye a little bit so put it on that eye it does like you're probably looking at the camera like that's not a huge difference then I will use Back to this 9.99 brush set. I use this one. This is like kind of a fluffy one. It's a fluffy angled. I don't really care that it's angled. I just happen to like that it's fluffy. So I will dip this in my highlighter and I go underneath my brow line. I'll kind of go to the inner corner of my eye and I even drag it underneath my eye. Again, if you have puffy eyes, maybe don't do that. Again, underneath your brow bone or on your brow bone, underneath your brow, inner corner and underneath my eye. Basically just kind of toss the light all over the place. Then I go to my brows. So I have my brows tattooed, but my brows are very thin. When you get them tattooed, will still fade. And then when you put your makeup on, they go lighter. This is literally my favorite product I think I've ever used. It is called Tarte Amazonian Clay. Okay, I use medium brown. Can you see that? And it comes with the angled brush and it's actually a really good angled brush with the little brushery thingy on the end. This I've probably had for two years. Still plenty it lasts forever so I'll just dip a little bit in and then I go under the main I just follow the line of my brow and then I take that line and I blend upward so I'm softening the line that I just drew putting cut pushing color up if that makes any sense of what I'm doing but it gives I like this, it's a clay, it's long wearing, it's waterproof brow mousse. Anyway, you can kind of see what I did there. It just warmed up the brow, it gave it a little bit more definition. This is a great one if you have light brows because you there's so much control with this. You can just barely dip it and you don't do a harsh clean line, you just barely like it. Da, 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 or you know like scattered not like a smooth line you get the lighter color I promise you I love it on everyone okay one more thing so when I had my brows tattooed I didn't have her go very dramatic because I feel like brows are trendy so you know when I was in middle school super thin pencil eyebrows were in style then it came like bushy eyebrows are in style and now like really thick heavy eyebrows are in style so I had her tattoo just my natural brow and then I can exaggerate with this so I still like a pretty clean brow anyway so that's one great thing about this product is I say don't tattoo or micro blade your brows to the trends because trends will change and you're gonna be stuck with them caterpillar eyebrows I have a sister who pulls out her eyebrows and tattooing was the best thing ever because she couldn't get this stuff to stay on because there was no hair to like really hold it in place so getting tattooed if you have holes or your brows aren't growing in certain spots or if you're one of those people that pull your eyebrows out, tattooing is 
such a great option, but have them go with the very uh, minimal brow because you can always make it thicker with products, but you can't ever go back and make it thinner. I mean, you could, I think it'd be like a lot of work. Okay, now on to the eyes. So I like to highlight before I do my brows, and the reason I do that is because I don't want this white powder going into the brows that I just colored. So that's method to my madness. Next up, I'm gonna go, I always tend to go to warm browns. Maybe because I wish I was a blue-eyed person because if you have blue eyes, if you go with an orangey brown, your eyes will go amazing bright blue. But I don't have blue eyes and I still like this color. So this is another fluffy one. It's kind of thin. So I have a little bit more control when I put my eyeshadow on. Again, part of the $9.99. You're literally getting like 20 brushes, maybe more. I don't know, I actually can't remember how many came in it, but it's 10 did because I shared it with Alyssa. That's how many came in the set. Oh, another tip. I can't stand, I know it's my own problem, but I hate when people dip it, their eyeshadow and then blow. Why? You're getting eyeshadow all over your counter, you're getting it all over everywhere, but where you want it was it on your eye. But I know what they're doing is because when you dip this into the palette, you're getting a lot on that end of the brush and you don't want to have like a big hunk right there. So here's what you do. You take your brush and you tap it so that that heavy powder goes into the brush. So then, guess what? You don't have to dip as often because it's all still in your brush. Like a windshield wiper, that's kind of how I do this. And then I'll take this corner and kind of drag it in again there. Anyways, because they really make or break how your the application of your makeup goes on. I used to think that people just weren't as good at putting makeup on, but it's because you need the right products and tools to put your makeup on. Now, moving on to how I do eyeliner. Two things, number one, I have eyeliner tattooed into my top line. It's like I didn't want it to be like a really dramatic eyeliner, I just wanted it to be in my lash line. That was one of the things when you're doing it, you're like, what the crap am I doing? And for like a week after while it's healing, you're like, what did I do? But then you love it for the rest of your life or as long as tattooing lasts, which I think is about your life. So I use this flat brush. This is a Shine Cosmetics brush. So I will say, Shine does have some good brushes. They are more, but guess what? They're awesome. So this is a flat one, but it's a flat, a fluffy flat. Let me show you a different one. This is another flat and it's not as fluffy and it's a little bit sharper. So sometimes it kind of hurts your eyes, but that's okay. You know, I just like that one better, if I'm being honest. I dip this into the same color that I did my eyeshadow and I drag it underneath my eyes. And the reason I do that, it's a dry powder, so it doesn't run down my eyes, number one. Number two, it's a softer line than eyeliner is. Well, and this color particular is like a lighter color, so it doesn't feel as harsh. I like this, it just feels softer. That's it, end of story. I like it because it's softer. You can use a darker line and make it like thicker. I just kind of just try to do like a thinner line, but you can make it really smoky, but again, it's what I just do. Um, another thing that you can do too, if you wanted to make a little darker, so sometimes I'll get like a really small, small brush and I'll dip it like into a darker color, like this one right here, and I'll just kind of get this little corner area, like a V. Sometimes I'll do that. I don't always do that. I'm just showing you for another option today. Another reason why you should tap your brushes when you um, do them is then you didn't, don't get fallout onto the bottom of your eye. You're not gonna get all those like flakes eyeshadow down here because you tapped it in your brush so it's not falling. Moving on now to mascara. I played with lots of mascaras and I've liked lots, lots of mascaras. However, for the best value, and sometimes I don't even wanna tell you because I swear half the time it's out of stock at the grocery store. So L'Oreal Luminous Carbon Black, it's my old dependable. It's the one I always go back to. There are a million good mascaras, but I'm telling you for $5.89, you can't beat it. You really can't. I just put my mascara on just probably like the rest of the world. Now, because I'm doing this in a video, it's harder for me to do. Another I tip that I like to tell people is to get a, a mirror that you can grab and look down in because you're less likely to get it up on your eyelid right there. Does that make sense? So that's my other tip, look down. Now, do I always put mascara on my bottom eyelashes? No, it just is, depends on my mood. I'll show you today. I don't like a lot of mascara on my bottom lashes, so I'll just kind of do that. Can you see that I did anything? So that's what I do for my mascara. And my other tip, but I'm in, not in with my blow dryer, is I love to take my blow dryer. You know what? I'm gonna show you. Okay, so I'll take my blow dryer, I will hold down the cold shot and turn it on high and I put it literally on my cheek and I blow it up because it helps curl your lashes, it dries them fast so that you don't blink and sneeze or anything and get mascara underneath your eyes, so watch. I'm telling you, 
I swear it makes them curl more. A lot of times when I do a spray, like a finishing spray, I will do this finishing spray before I put my mascara on so that I don't squeeze my eyes and get mascara all over, but I didn't do that because again, I'm out of order when I'm trying to do some makeup for, in front of other people or the camera. So then, take my blow dryer. And guess what, now if I sneeze, doesn't matter because my eyelashes are dry. Okay, so I'm interrupting because I feel like I need to tell you guys about this mascara. So I've been playing with it for the last few weeks. I have this on this side, nothing on this side, but I've been doing this, the Brooklyn and Bailey, against the L'Oreal Voluminous that I just told you about. And when I wear them side by side, I'll wear one on each eye. The Brooklyn and Bailey totally outperforms. It is a little bit more expensive, but it's a bigger tube, so you get more in it, and it wears so well all day. It doesn't get, like a lot of times I'd get a little bit of smudging down under my eye, and I know some people complain about getting mascara up in their eyeshadow area. So if you have that problem, don't bother with Voluminous, Brooklyn and Bailey. So I believe I have a coupon code that might still be active. I'll double check, but if I do, I'll link it down below. Okay, so I just put it on the other eye. Um, so the other thing I need to tell you about the Slash Next Door by Brooklyn and Bailey is that it's not waterproof, which I hate waterproof mascara, but it's um, like if you were to get splashed or cry or whatever, it doesn't run like regular mascara. It, it's it's kind of like a, a waxy base, if anything. That's like probably the best way to describe it. Anyway, so again, that one's Lash Next, Lash Next Door with Brooklyn and Bailey. Guys, I still love this. It just does smudge underneath your eyes. So if you ever have problems with smudging, don't bother with this one. There you go. And last but not least, lips. So I like to do lipstick after I've brushed my teeth or after I've eaten because then it's like stays nicer longer. But I switch between several of the MAC long wearing lip liners. All all time favorite is probably in control. However, I do like morning coffee. It's a little more brown. Let's go with morning coffee because I think I just sharpened it. Yeah, it's more, it's sharpened so it's gonna go on there. So lip liner, I just follow my lip around. And then I take it and I feather that line in so I don't have a harsh line. I'm telling you lip liner is the best thing. The reason why is it gives you an edge to your lipstick. So especially if you try to wear bright colors, actually even nude colors, because sometimes nude colors make it look like then all of a sudden you're like, where did my lips start and my face end or my face end and my lips start? I love lip liner. And specifically this long wearing one because it really does stay on for so long. Okay, today I'm gonna go with Velvet Teddy from MAC. This is a good neutral lip and I go over everything. I go over the lip liner line and I kind of blend it together. One thing that is nice about this lipstick is it is um, a matte finish and whenever I use matte finishes they stay on longer so I will touch up later in the day with gloss but I always usually start with a matte another good option is the shine this is a very similar color to what I'm wearing it's the shine lip blast and it's timeless it kind of gives this very similar color however I still put lip liner on even with this this one needs lip liner the least less than most um, lipsticks this is usually my go-to I do use this a lot they're similar colors my very last tip I do love all-nighter urban decay all-nighter and I know that's what everyone uses however it smells to me like someone spit on my face like you know they go that's what it smells like this one has more of a scent if you have like acne you can kind of feel it like a little bit sting I think because there's alcohol in it but it's model in a bottle it smells more perfumey so if you don't like fragrance, go back to the spit smelling. No, I'm just kidding, all nighter. But I like model in a bottle. I get it on Amazon. It's actually not very cheap. I mean, it's not very expensive and it lasts for a long time. So a couple sprays and call it good. 